Yes. So it's a story we're telling, and there's uh, another chapter of this story. This story is the spectrochemical series of ligands. And this is a series going from iodine all the way to carbon monoxide and cyanide, in which uh, we are ranking, so less than. So over here is going to be the smallest delta zero, the smallest crystal field splitting energy. And over here is going to be the largest crystal field splitting energy. And if you notice, there um, is a definite trend, and that's described right here, is uh, based on the donor atom, the uh, atom that is donating the pair of electrons. You can see for the largest ones, we've got carbon donating a pair of electrons. Then we've got a whole series here, and we'll put these in pink, of compounds that have nitrogen donating a pair of electrons. Then we've got a whole series of compounds, and it's getting a little crowded here. So I'll put that line on the top. Those are the oxygen donating a pair of electrons. And then it goes uh, fluorine, fluorine, chlorine, sulfur, bromine, and iodine as you go down. And the spectrochemical series is something that you will see. Actually, the picture down here does it uh, in the opposite direction. So it's going increasing delta naught. Uh, but what you can see is carbon will have the largest uh, crystal field splitting energy. Now, um, how does this impact anything, especially transition metal complexes? Well, let's do something where we compare something with fluorine, which is lower on the spectrochemical series. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, cyanide, something that is the strongest or one of the strongest, tied for strongest. Okay. So uh, we're going to compare these two transition metal complexes. And you can see, let's see, so this has got F minus in it, and this has got cyanide minus. Each of those has six ligands. So each of those is going to have cobalt 3 plus. And we've worked with cobalt 3 plus before, way back here, I believe, and we saw that the Electron configuration for cobalt 3 plus was argon 3D6. And at least here, we've got the same transition metal. And uh, now let's go ahead and think about, well, we've got octahedral. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be careful, and I'm actually going to draw the fact that delta zero, the crystal field splitting energy, is much larger for the cyanide ion. That's what the spectrochemical series tells us. So cyanide has the largest crystal field splitting energy. Fluoride has amongst the smallest, although not the smallest. And what we're going to see here is that um, you're going to have what's going to be called F minus uh, is going to lead to high spin complexes. In general, and because of that, uh, and because of its smaller crystal field splitting energy, F minus is considered, considered what's called a weak field ligand. And weak field ligands typically lead to high spin complexes. Cyanide, on the other hand, going to be called a strong field uh, ligand.
and leads to low spin complexes. And just to bring it full circle or a little bit more for full circle, crystal field splitting energy is going to be larger than the pairing energy here. And in general, uh, crystal field splitting energy is going to be less than the pairing energy here. Okay. So now we can put our electrons in. We have six electrons for a weak field ligand. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. And here we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how you have, let's see, so uh, when you have a strong field ligand, you get low spin complexes. And in this case, we'd end up with a diamagnetic species. And over here, we end up with paramagnetic, like so.